Welcome to Fueled by Death Show. Hey, it's not just a podcast anymore. Get ready, the show's about to begin. Welcome, everybody, to Fueled by Death Show, and I'm alone. I'm all alone. I'm actually not alone because all of you guys are here with me. Um, The mother of content is uh, starting the Thanksgiving holiday a little early tonight uh, with friends and family, so I'm going to be doing it solo, but uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I have a ton of stuff to get to tonight. You guys are going to lose your minds. I swear to God. It's it's mind-blowing stuff we're going to be talking about tonight. It's going to be very, very exciting. For anybody who's just tuning in, whether you're on Facebook or on Twitch or on YouTube, I am the Incredible Jeff, and uh, we do this show every single Wednesday night, um, barring a holiday usually. <laughs> and uh, you can tune in, like I said, Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube. And what's cool about that is we give away a mug every single week. This week, I found some of our recent Halloween mugs kicking around the warehouse, and I snagged three of them. And one lucky person on Facebook, on Twitch, and on YouTube will win a mug signed by myself and sent right out to you. How do you win? All you got to do is do what you're doing. Watch the show, drop a comment in those comments, and one lucky comment will be picked to win a mug. And it's that simple. At random, a comment on Facebook and on Twitch will be picked to win as soon as I sign off the show tonight. Uh, But YouTube doesn't allow me to see those comments as soon as the show is over. So I will announce the winner live on YouTube right before we sign off. And that is our Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde mug. As you can see, it's the first time Deneen Pottery has ever done a double-sided medallion. And now you're going to see everybody and their brother make a mug like this. But we were first. Deathwish Coffee. And I love you guys. I'm thankful for you guys. For, you know, it, it, it is the season. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Today is Thanksgiving Eve or Amateur Night, as a lot of people um, call it. And I am very excited that you all decided to spend it with me rather than your families. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hopefully your families are with you, too. Um, and we're going to have, like I said, a ton of fun tonight. First and foremost, I got to say, even though she's not here... We all miss the mother of content, and because we love the mother of content so much, you guys all get a special discount code, and you're going to really want to probably use that this coming weekend, too. This code right here, mother of content for 12% off everything you see on deathwishcoffee.com. That is the world's strongest coffee, the mugs, the merchandise, everything that's there, 12% off every single purchase you make if you use Mother of content, all one word. When you go to check out at deathwishcoffee.com, you'll see a little um, enter code here, like box. That's where you're going to enter mother of content, all one word, for 12% off. And everything we get to do here at Fueled by Deathcast, you want to follow Fueled by Deathcast on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, at Fueled by Deathcast. That's the best way to find extra content, new episodes of the live show and the podcast and everything else in between, and everything we do would be nothing without my buddy, the voice of death himself, Brock Powell. Wait. That was that was my impersonation of Brock Powell without impersonating his voice because he is the voice actor on this show and a thousand voices out there in the world. Follow Brock at Brock Talks across all social media and as well at BrockVox.com because we love Brock to death. Now, like I said, we have a ton of stuff to get to. When we get to the update at the end of the show, I'm going to literally walk you through every single deal, new piece of merchandise, everything that's coming out from Deathwish Coffee starting tomorrow on Thanksgiving all the way through Cyber Monday. Some of the stuff you know about, some of the stuff you've never seen before, and a bunch of deals. Literally, you could get all of your holiday shopping done this weekend on deathwishcoffee.com, and I'm going to help you do it. Uh, You're also going to get a sneak peek of this week's Death cast guest and it is somebody i've been so excited to put out into the world um 
I'm just going to tell you, I met with her a couple months ago. Her name is Emily Hastings. She is an incredible guitarist. And one of the questions I get all the time on this show is this guitar behind me is literally Zach Wilde's guitar. He played it on stage um, and got off stage and handed it to our CEO, Mike Brown. And I've been lucky enough to have it behind me on every single show. And everybody always says, Jeff, you should pick it up and play it. I don't play guitar. But Emily does. She played a little bit of it, which was amazing. She got to play on that guitar. So you guys will see that later in the show. You're going to meet this week's Death Star of the Week. But before we get into all that, let's jump into science. We've been doing the Humanity in Space series. I've been having so much fun researching and putting this series together. Part one was two weeks ago. We did it all on space suits. Part two last week was all about space walk. So the next logical step is the space station. And I was going to do a full episode on the history and science of all the different space stations. But there's so much, I couldn't believe it. So this first episode is all about space stations leading up to the one we all know and love, the International Space Station. That will be next week. But so I learned so much about the different stations that went into making the technology and science to get us to that moment. So here's that. Ah, science! Welcome to part three of our brand new series, Humanity in Space. In parts one and two, we took an in-depth look at the history and science behind spacesuits and spacewalks. Humanity has now made it to space and has walked among the stars and even on the moon, but those are short trips compared to the time that astronauts now live and work on the International Space Station. But that space station isn't the first of its kind. With the idea of the space station, we can once again look towards science fiction as the precursor to the modern day ideas. The first mention of something resembling a space station was in Edward Everett Hale's The Brick Moon, which was published in 1869. The story tells of a 200-foot brick sphere that is meant to orbit the Earth as a navigational aid for ships, but it is accidentally launched into space with people inside. The term space station was coined some 50 years later by Romanian rocket pioneer Hermann Oberth. Oberth published two papers, The Rocket into Interplanetary Space in 1923 and The Way to Space Travel in 1929, which talked of space stations being refueling stations for rockets and to monitor the weather on Earth. Speaking of Oberth, he conceived a 100-meter-wide concave mirror that could be used to reflect sunlight onto a concentrated point on the Earth. During the Second World War, German scientists ran with this idea, developing the Sun Gun, a super weapon that could be mounted on a space station to focus the sun's energy to boil an ocean or burn a city. It was never completed. Oberth also started to teach and mentor a young scientist by the name of Werner von Braun. Von Braun was handpicked by the German military in 1932 to develop rockets for the war effort and was secretly moved to America as part of the military project Operation Paperclip. Von Braun is known as the father of rocket technology, but he also developed some of the first highly detailed space station designs. In fact, appearing on Walt Disney's Tomorrowland series in 1956, Von Braun brought his wheel-shaped space station idea to the public. This station would rotate to provide an artificial gravity and also be an orbiting laboratory and a stepping stone for missions to the moon. While this idea was never built, a decade later it inspired the station featured in 2001, A Space Odyssey. Futuristic space station ideas almost became a reality in 1958. When NASA was created, the first mission was getting an astronaut into space, and the second was to develop a space station. Exploring various wheel-like designs, these were tested into the early 1960s, but the focus was shifted to a lunar landing after the Russians put the first human in space. While many of the first ideas detailing what a space station could be were never actually created, they led the way for the science and technology that eventually would become the first stations orbiting in space. In April of 1971, the Soviet Union launched Salyut 1, the first space station of any kind into low Earth orbit. Salyut 1 proved to be a successful station and was 66 feet in length with several compartments. The transfer compartment was equipped with a docking port for the Soyuz, and the docking system developed is still in use today on the International Space Station. 
The main compartment was pressurized and was where the astronauts would work and sleep, and the auxiliary compartments contained various scientific equipment, engines and batteries, and life support. The first crew was supposed to be the Suez 10, but they ran into troubles while docking and had to abort the mission and return safely to Earth. The Soyuz 11 crew became the first manned mission on a space station and remained in orbit for 23 days. Upon re-entry, a pressure seal was broken and the crew died, becoming the only astronauts to technically die in space. This was also due to the fact that they were not wearing pressurized spacesuits on re-entry, which became mandatory after this spaceflight. Salyut 1's mission was ended in October, six months after its launch, because it was running out of fuel. It burned up over the Pacific Ocean. Salyut 1 was part of the Almaz space station development being created by the Russian military. In fact, Salyut 2, 3, and 5 were all actually military stations launched under the guise of a civilian space station. The Salyut 3 station actually was outfitted with an anti-aircraft gun and was fired while the station was unmanned at least once, while some reports state it was fired up to three times. This is the only known armed, crewed military spacecraft ever. The Almaz and subsequent Salyut programs laid the groundwork for space stations, with later models introducing the second spacecraft port, allowing for more refueling and supplies and crews to inhabit the stations continuously. America followed suit with Skylab in 1973, and Skylab was created by using a Saturn SIVB module, or the third stage of a Saturn V rocket, the same rocket that carried the crewed moon landing missions. The idea for creating a space station out of a part of a Saturn V rocket was first conceived by Von Braun himself in 1964, and these initial ideas led the way to what would inevitably become Skylab. The Skylab station included a solar observatory, a workshop, and several hundred science experiments. Skylab was also instrumental in updating the habitability of a space station. Astronaut comfort had not been a concern with previous space station designs, as they were smaller and astronauts stayed for only a short amount of time. Skylab had a wardroom for meals and relaxation, and a window to view Earth and space. The astronauts of the Apollo missions complained about the quality of their food. So the food was greatly improved for Skylab, and it has been continued to be improved upon to this day. On Skylab, each astronaut had a personal sleeping area with a curtain, a sleeping bag, and a locker. Skylab even boasted the addition of a shower and a toilet, and this added to the astronauts' comfort for prolonged stays in space, but was also a way to obtain precise urine and feces samples for examination on Earth. Some of the biggest advancements in space station's technology were the ones that accurately could monitor the human body and how it reacts to prolonged time in space. The Skylab shower, in particular, was an interesting way to help improve the astronaut's mental state in space. It had a cylindrical curtain that went from floor to ceiling and had a vacuum system to suck away the water, which was the biggest concern of water droplets floating away. The astronauts would use six pints of water and the water and soap were carefully planned out so that each astronaut could take one shower per week. The astronauts that used the shower on Skylab mentioned that it was an enjoyable experience, but drying off was a little tedious. And the entire process from setup to packing the shower back away took over two hours. Skylab helped further the scientific discoveries in both space and Earth immensely during its six years in space. Three manned crews stayed at the station, the first crew staying for 28 days and performing two spacewalks to repair much of the damage the station had sustained during launch and deployment. The other crews stayed for 59 and 84 days, respectively. The science performed on Skylab included human adaptability and physiology experiments, biomedical research, crystal growth, space physics, Earth weather and geology experiments, and even student experiments, including testing spiders spinning webs in low gravity. The study of X-ray emissions from the sun actually contributed to the birth of the field of X-ray astronomy. Skylab ended its mission in 1979 because the space shuttle program was not yet ready to be able to resupply the station. The demise of the station was an international media event, with many worried that it might re-enter the atmosphere and crash land in a populated area. T-shirts with bullseyes and Skylab repellent with a money-back guarantee were sold across the world, and the San Francisco Examiner offered a $10,000 prize for the first piece of the station delivered to its offices. NASA aimed the station at a spot off the coast of Cape Town, South Africa, 
but the station did not burn up as expected and there was a 4% calculation error, resulting in Skylab crashing down into Western Australia, one of the most underpopulated regions on Earth. The Shire of Esperance in Australia jokingly fined NASA $400 for littering. NASA obviously ignored it, but on the 30th anniversary in 2009, California radio host Scott Barley got his morning show listeners to rally together and raise the money, which Scott then flew to Australia and delivered personally. Also, 17-year-old Stan Thornton picked up some of the chunks of the space station off his roof in 1979 and flew to San Francisco to collect his $10,000 reward. Mir was the first module space station being assembled between 1986 and 1996. And it also proved the theory that a station could orbit the Earth for a longer period of time and humanity could live and work inside the station for a much longer period of time. Until the ISS broke the record, the Mir station had the longest continuous human presence in space at 3,644 days, and 12 out of the 15 years the station was in operation, it was occupied by humanity. Cosmonaut Valery Polyakov still holds the record for the longest single human spaceflight at 437 days and 18 hours between 1994 and 1995. His combined space experience exceeds 22 months. Following the success of the Salyut program, the Mir station was technically the eighth mission of the Salyut program, and the first module of the station, known as the core module, was launched in 1986. When it was complete, the station consisted of seven pressurized modules and several unpressurized components. The docking module was actually installed by the Space Shuttle Atlantis as part of mission STS-74, and the shuttle docked to the station afterward. The station's assembly marked the beginning of the third generation of space station design, the first generation being the Salyut 1 and Skylab, and the second including Salyut 6 and 7 as they incorporated two docking ports. To break down the main seven modules, first is the Mir core. The main living quarters, the attitude control systems, and main engines are housed here. Next is Kavant 1, which consisted of two pressurized compartments and one unpressurized for experiments an X-ray telescope, an ultraviolet telescope, and life support systems were housed here. The next module was Kavant 2, which housed an EVA airlock and carried the Soviet equivalent of the manned maneuvering unit, plus other scientific equipment, including an Incubator 2 unit, which was used for hatching and raising quail. Japanese quail were the first vertebrates to be hatched in space, and in 1990, eight of the 33 eggs hatched, and they were studied for biological and food source experiments. The fourth module was Crystal, the technology module. This contained various astronomical and biotechnology experiments and docking ports that helped with the shuttle Mir program. Next was the module Spectre. This served as living quarters for the American astronauts and housed NASA-sponsored experiments. Spectre also featured four solar arrays, which generated half the station's electrical power. The docking module, brought up by Space Shuttle Atlantis, allowed for a better way for the shuttle to dock and allowed for more crew and experiments to be brought on board. Priroda was the final Mir pressurized module, and its primary focus was to conduct Earth resource experiments developed by 12 different nations. Mir was visited by a total of 28 long-duration crews, varying in length from 72 days to Valerie's 437-day flight. 104 different people from 12 nations visited the station during its mission. While Mir's time in space heralded a new era in space exploration and science advancement, it also sustained a few accidents that threatened the station's safety, the biggest of which was the testing of the station's manual docking system to dock unmanned cargo spacecraft Progress M33 and Progress M34. Due to malfunctioning equipment, both tests failed, and Progress M34 actually struck the Spectre module, puncturing it and causing the station to depressurize and the module to be permanently sealed off. Mir's contributions to the advancement of humanity in space are vast. We learned about the prolonged effects of being in space on humans and other species. We grew crops, we hatched eggs, and studied the cosmos like never before. Mir's mission ended in 2001, and it crashed peacefully into the Pacific Ocean. And Russia and the U.S. had their sights on a brand new international space station. 
next week, our space station journey culminates with an in-depth look at the International Space Station, which has surpassed all records and accolades and is set to celebrate two decades of humans continuously living in space. So, so cool. Um, I couldn't believe what I learned about all that. And there's so much more, too. I keep saying this, uh, like a broken record, I know, about the space segments that I get to do. But go to NASA.gov if you guys are interested in learning more about anything I'm talking about. Because the wealth of knowledge that's on that site is mind-blowing. There's more um, space stations that have been there, that have been out there, especially in the Salyut program, and also, um, you know, the, Ch the Chinese stations that went up in 2011. And it's just, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. So I can't wait for next week to really dive into the ISS and really, like, find out everything that happened there. I wanted to um, uh, just say uh, quickly again, for anybody who's just tuning in, you have a chance to win a mug that you see before you. It's our Halloween mug from this year, the Dr. and Jekyll, Mr. Hyde double-sided medallion mug. Uh, first time Deneen Pottery has ever done that. And uh, all you got to do to win is watch the show, share the show, drop a comment in those comments. One lucky comment will be picked to win this mug. And all you and like I said, all you got to do is drop that comment in there on Facebook and on Twitch. I will pick those as soon as we sign off. But on YouTube, you guys are saying you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Hope you can hear me. But on, but on YouTube, you can, um, I will say it right before we sign off. And uh, I love giving away mugs. I'll sign, I'll, I'll sign them and send them right out to you. I do want to um, mention a couple questions and comments that I saw on there. First of all, over on YouTube, Michael Double W. Keller Inks over on YouTube, you said that you are a brand new fan of Death Wish Coffee. Welcome. That's great to hear. I love seeing you know, people in the comments who are like, I just tried your coffee or I'm just back. I love it. I love that. I love seeing that. So it's it's that's awesome. I saw so many comments about the sun gun. Right. How crazy was that? That literally he came up with an idea to make a sun gun. And then, of course, the Nazis went and ran with it. And we're going to do that and, and make it. But then never it never happened. But just mind blowing that even humanity was like, you know what? We could use the sun as a weapon. Just crazy. Um, also, I'm with you uh, over on YouTube. I didn't write down your last name, but I think it was probably Jesse Filtero. Um, you said uh, s spiders in space. Nope. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm good on that, too. I, I mean, spiders are okay when I'm here and I can run away from them or whatever. I'm not that scared of spiders, but I don't really want them, like, you know, around where I sleep and work. And, and on the space station, it's cramped quarters and got to do with a spider. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Um, well, let's see what else over on Facebook, Rachel Stone, you asked who my tattoo artist is, um, you follow the, my, if you follow the fuel by death cast page, I'll actually post about it. Um, so you can see it in full, but his, his name is Matthew Maroka. You can check it out. Matthew Maroka art. And, uh, he's an incredible fine artist and also tattoo artist, uh, right here in upstate New York in Saratoga Springs. Uh, he does all my work. He's been my best friend. He was my best man at my wedding. I love that kid. Um, and let's see what else, what else, what else? Oh, so many of you guys were like, I want a Skylab shirt. Me too. With the bullseye on it. I totally want that. I didn't even know that that was a thing. And I was talking about how they made Skylab repellent with a, a hundred percent money back guarantee. If you got hit by Skylab, they'd give you your money back. Um, I scoured the internet looking for Skylab repellent and could not find it. <laughs> I really wanted to see that so bad. I like, I just couldn't. Um, finally, over on Facebook, um, Chad Tiller, you look like you were playing a fun drinking game. I missed the rules. What were <laughs> you kept you kept commenting drink during that segment? Um, why? Like, I want to play too. 
<laughs> I love a good drinking game. And this is the day before Thanksgiving when, you know, drinking games are fun, right? Right? Um, anyway, anyway. Let's move on with a lot more fun. Um, every single week, I like to feature one of you out there on the Death Star segment of the week. And if any of you would like to be on the Death Star segment, it's this easy. All you got to do is follow Fueled by Deathcast on Twitter, on Instagram, or on Facebook, and direct message the page. Wherever you are on social media, just direct message Fueled by Deathcast saying you want to be a Death Star, and I'll hit you up, and we'll figure out a good time to do it. It takes about 10 minutes. We record video and audio. Super easy to do, but I love, love doing this segment and featuring one of you. So you guys, if you've never met Jim, and I'm going to get your name wrong, Jim Katavinus, if you've never met him, you're going to meet him right now. Good, good. It is a fully operational Death Star of the Week. I'm going to start this gym like I always do. I want to know kind of when you first heard about Death Wish Coffee, either the company, the coffee. Do you remember what year that might have been? Yeah, it was uh, back in 2017, and I was tired of drinking all these weak coffees. You'd go through the drive throughs and you'd, sometimes you'd get it like this vinegar taste. and some. I just wanted something that was going to be bold and strong and not hurt my stomach. And then so I... I went online and I said, world's strongest coffee. I want something that's going to be bold, you know. And uh, you guys came up. And I said, all right, I'm going to try it. And I, I haven't been back. I haven't, that's it. That's excellent. Before discovering the coffee, were you a big coffee drinker? I, I actually started coffee drinking coffee late. I, I, uh, I started when I was 33. And it was a funny story. It was back in 2000. I was working in the call center. And this woman came in, our co-worker, she came in with two iced coffees. And one was for her, one for, was for her friend. But her friend ended up calling out that night. So she said, hey, you want to try this iced coffee? I said, yeah, why not? Well, by the time I got down to the bottom of it, I was given the best damn customer service you've ever imagined. And I would work from there. I was, I was hooked. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So now with drinking Death Wish and everything, um, what is your go-to brewing method of coffee? I, I don't like to make a big pot, so I don't have uh, like a drip or anything. I have a Ninja. Perfect. And so I make one cup at a time, just fresh, perfect every time. And I use the, the uh, Cafe Forte, and it's just a bolder taste. I, I just I like to chew my coffee, really. Ah, nice, so. nice. Those ninja <laughs> things, they, they really know how to make a good product. They really do. Really yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. The other side of it then is obviously, um, you know, we like making the world's strongest cup of coffee, but we like making the cup that you get to put it in too. And so I always ask, are you a mug lifer? Do you collect the mugs? I am out of control. When I introduce myself, I say, hi, my name is Jim. I'm a mugaholic. <laughs> I check Check, I, I keep all my, my mugs on an Excel sheet so I know what I have, the numbers, the, the prices I paid, and everything. And I just looked. I have 86 Death Wish Cups. Wow. Mugs. That's yeah. amazing. So what was the first one you got? The first one I got I don't have anymore because it was the Dropkick Murphy one. I love that cup. It was the perfect mug. It was just enough to have two cups of coffee and my cream and sugar so I wouldn't slop it, so it was perfect. Well, I was brushing my dog out one day, and I went to turn around to get the brush, the hair out of the brush, and I knocked my Murphy cup over. I was crying. I was like, oh, no. And so I contacted your customer service, and I spoke to, I think it was Christine, and she said, we may have one, and she got me one, and I, I've never drank out of it because I said, I'm never going to do that again. Oh, that's but that amazing. Was, that was my first mug. But my favorite mug is the Yeti. Yeah. Yeah, I love that color. I love that Yeti, too. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's really cool. So you've been a fan of the company. You've been a fan of the mugs. You've seen what we've done here at Deathwish. I got to ask, is there anything we haven't tried that you'd like to see us try? I would like to see a conical burr grinder that has the Deathwish brand. I've, I've looked at so many. I... If you could connect with the Barazza Encore, either the Barazza company, mm -hmm. they make an excellent. I, I've been holding off not buying one just in case you guys do come up with one. But the nice thing about the Barazza, you can buy parts for them. So you don't have to throw the whole unit out if something breaks. 
So it'd be just less in the landfill and stuff. But you can work on it yourself. They have online tutorials that you can work right through it. So that's something I, I would consider. That's awesome. Well, I can definitely comment on that. It's something that we've been wanting to do here at Deathwish for a while is to, because obviously we provide you with coffee, we provide you with mugs, we provide you with even ways to brew your coffee like the Chemex and our kettle and all of those things. And we've never done a, we've never done a grinder. We've looked at that company. We've looked at a couple other companies and we haven't found the right fit yet because we want to obviously come out with a, a good working product, but we also right. don't want to break your bank. You know, and, exactly. and oh, to to brand something like that, it starts to get very pricey. And we really don't want it to be something that's, I mean, we obviously, a little pricey is okay, especially if it's a branded yeah. awesome product, but we definitely don't want it to be extra, you know, astronomical prices and stuff like that. So the other side of it is, is we've been looking into maybe even creating our own. And um, I don't know if it's going to be a 2020 thing, but it is something that's on the table that we're looking into to actually either create a Death Wish Coffee specific grinder or work with an awesome company and come out with something that's co-branded. That, that would be so awesome. Yeah, that, that, that would be really rad. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to get that very soon. Um, but that's why I love hearing, you know, that's what you guys are thinking about as well. And I love meeting everybody from this community because... We would be nothing without all of you guys out there loving what we do. I absolutely love the community. Just, I mean, I look forward every day just to go to see what's going on, who has what, and um, and, and your podcast. I I set alarms for your podcast so I can be sure to watch your podcast. I love the podcast. Thank you so awesome. much. Thank you so much. You I definitely think. see you watching it in those comments. And uh, I can't thank you enough, Jim, for taking time and talking with me on the Death Star segment today. All right. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. So cool talking with Jim. Um, like I said, if any of you would like to be a Death Star, just hit up Fueled by Deathcast on any social media platform. And uh, let me know, and we'll make it work. Um, so, a couple months ago, I got to go down to New York City and meet with this week's podcast guest, Emily Hastings. Emily Hastings has been on my radar for a while because she is a killer when it comes to guitar. She is a killer as a musician, period. She's just been a musician for as long as she can remember. Um, singer, songwriter, guitarist, and uh, she plays a lot, a lot on wild audio guitars like the one sitting behind me. And uh, when I went down to the city to meet with her, she was actually visiting her sister, and because she was traveling, she didn't have a guitar with her. So I brought this guitar and my own personal amp with me um, in the hopes that maybe she'd want to play on it. Because, again, the only person who's ever played on this guitar is Zach Wilde. That's it. And uh, as such a fan of Zach as I am, and I know Emily is too, I was hoping that she'd play on it. And when we were done with the interview... She picked it up, and she played on it a little bit. And uh, you guys want to see that? I've got that right here. That was so much fun. She was actually um, having a little trouble because Zach uses such heavy gauge strings because he's Zach frickin' wild. He's a Viking. And it, was, and it wasn't like, you know, what she's normally used to. But we had a lot of fun doing that. And I had so much fun talking with her about her career and everything she does on YouTube. She has an incredible YouTube channel. I 100% want you all to go subscribe to her YouTube channel on YouTube. It's Emily Hastings, or type in Emily Rose Hastings. You'll find her. She's the chick with the guitar, and uh, you can't miss her. She's has a ton of awesome videos of her playing, and she even started doing some of behind the scenes and stuff like that. So tomorrow, the full episode with my interview with Emily comes out, and we talk about 
everything, including details about her first ever solo album that she's coming out with that she's so excited with that will hopefully hit, be hitting next year. But before that, I have a very special sneak peek of tomorrow's episode with Emily right here talking about her love of guitar and her process getting used to, you know, making these videos on YouTube. And here's that. Fueled by Deathcast. You've done an incredible job in this, I want to call, new age of the music industry <laughs> where we we can connect with someone like you on a musical level, you know, without having to maybe see you live or something like that. Yeah. You have had a lot of success on, you know, platforms like YouTube. Was that hard to kind of get into that that area that space was it hard to kind of transition as a musician into there that's that's just an awesome question i'm really glad you talked about it because um at first i will say it it wasn't hard at all because it's just something i wanted to leave my mark by doing uh the videos like i wanted to be like someday i want if YouTube's still around, <laughs> I want to have a video where people can see me in that moment, in that space and time, playing my guitar, and it's just raw. Right. And I want people to see that. And so that's the first reason I did it, did it without any expectation at all. Like, and then I'm just so, honestly, I'm so grateful to every single person and YouTube as well who watches my videos because it, it just, it allowed me to meet so many incredible people, including Devil's Coffee and you guys, <laughs> because I mean, who would ever think that YouTube could connect people all over the world, like all over the planet, like people who don't even speak the same language as you, right. you know, but music is the universal language. So I just feel, sometimes if you really start thinking about it, I feel like it's, it's just truly incredible because it has just connected people so much. And I think you do a really good job on the connectivity side of it as well. It's not, there's a lot of YouTubers, mm -hmm. musicians, mm -hmm. that will put out a very well produced, you know, good looking, good sounding video mm -hmm. on YouTube. And that's all you really know about them. Right. You pull that curtain back a lot. Thank you. <laughs> and I think that's really, really cool because like a lot of what you do uh -huh. is very hard. <laughs> Thank very, you. <laughs> you're incredibly talented. Thank you, Jeff. But it's so refreshing. Like, uh -huh. and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring our listeners and, and viewers to one specifically. Um, one of the first um, behind the scenes vlogs you mm -hmm. did was when you were doing uh, Perry Mason. Yes. Yes. And um, uh, I loved that video because it really shows like like the, you struggling. The work. Yeah. And I do struggle. And I never. Um, it's it's a it's a truth. Like there's things that I just oh, I can't get this. Can't go. Right. And I just went and it's frustrating. And I think it's important to show that. And I I want to do more vlogs that show that side because it is hard. And you know you play violin, so it it takes a lot of patience and practice. No. Hey. No. Then explain, please. someone like yourself who's playing a song predominantly you know done by Zach Wilde yes who is, the boss yes who is at the top <laughs> of the list of guitar heroes of all lists all the time you yes know? and he got there because of the work 
that he put that into he it. put into it you know mm-hmm. so i mean it would be i feel in this day and age detrimental for someone to just put out a video and just be like yeah i can do that i too. can do that that's so easy <laughs> it's, like, it's like dude it actually gave me a huge respect for zach wilde because um it's hard and those pinch from running that, that guy just like pulls him out it's like this is nothing <laughs> he's great but he but you know i got the awesome chance to sit down and talk with him as well and mm-hmm. he said the same thing because i asked him you know does he ever get to really play for fun or is it mm-hmm. all practice yeah and he's like it's both he's it's like i cannot get up any single day and not pick up the guitar. Yeah, do you feel the same way? I do feel the same way. Um, I I'm missing my guitar t- because I, I didn't bring it on this trip, but someone I know <laughs> brought a guitar with them. Um, but actually, I it's it's weird because I'm I'm feeling like I'm feeling the. I miss it. It's like my fingers feel weird. Like I was like, I really want to play on my guitar, you know, just like practice a little bit just for the love of the instrument, you know? Yeah. So I would just, the love of playing. It's great. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. I almost, I almost wasn't back. Um, man, that was amazing. It really was amazing to talk to Emily. You guys got to check out that full episode available everywhere tomorrow where podcasts are found. Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Music, and in full video. Watch it in full video on the Deathwish Coffee Company YouTube page. It's so, so cool to be able to see and hear her story because she's awesome. And... We met because of Death Wish Coffee, which is great. Just like I met all of you guys, which is great. So 100% tune into that full video tomorrow on YouTube or listen to it on podcast. Look, you guys are going to be in a food coma. I know I am. And a podcast is a great thing to just sit on the couch in your food coma and just relax. And that'll be great. Um, But speaking of, I do want to mention, we're going to run down now everything there is a deal with Death Wish Coffee and the Thanksgiving holiday moving into Black Friday. You guys ready? You guys ready for all of this? I even have handy-dandy mug cam going, I hope. I'm doing all this on my own today, so I'm, I'm hoping that it all works. I might have to run, run and try it again, but uh, we'll work. We'll work on it. So first of all, what I want to say, if you guys happen to be posting about Thanksgiving on Instagram, especially on Instagram stories tomorrow. Make sure when you go to Instagram stories and if you like to put any of those stickers or, you know, animated GIFs on your stories, type in Death Wish Coffee in the GIF section. And I made a ton of them and a couple specifically for Thanksgiving. Use them and we can trend. We can help Death Wish Coffee trend on Thanksgiving and that'd be a lot of fun. Um, But before that, I want to talk to you guys about a couple deals we got going on moving into the holiday season. First of all, I don't know if you've been to the website in the last few days, but on deathwishcoffee.com, if you go and look at, right at the top of the page, we've got this banner. Let's see if this works. There it is. See that? Get 15% off your order automatically when you spend $75 on the site. And it's so easy to spend $75 with all of the amazing stuff we've got and some of the new stuff I'm about to show you that's coming out this weekend. Like I said, you could get all of your holiday shopping done for every all your friends, all your family, done. Deathwishcoffee.com this weekend. That's it. One place, one-stop shop, and you're, you're, you're done. Everybody's happy. It'll be amazing. And you get 15% off for every $75 you spend. That's, that's, that's nuts. So that's one thing. Number two is that... We have made a handy-dandy holiday guide for you guys. So, again, go to deathwishcoffee.com, and on that drop-down – let me pull that up again. On that drop-down menu where you see shop, if you go to coffee or merchandise, wherever you want to go in that shop, okay, at the bottom of those pages, when you see all the merchandise or all the coffee products, at the bottom of those pages, you'll see these icons. Now, these are clickable icons and literally will bring you to tailored pages – for your shopping needs. So if you're looking for real high ticket stuff like our awesome, you know, almost like workman's jacket or, you know, the Chemex bundle or something like that, 
you're looking for under $100. The under $40, there's a ton of stuff there. A lot of our hoodies, a lot of our, you know, you know, middle of the ground, a lot of our bigger mugs are on that under $40. And we have a ton of holiday gifts that are under $20 as well. And, I mean, again, those three tabs alone will allow you to get all of your ho holiday shopping done. It's that easy, and it's so cool. It's so cool. Shout out to, sh to the mother of content and our amazing senior art director, Thomas Dragonetti, for putting those together, too, because it's just absolutely amazing that I, I would love to be able to go to a site and just be like, sure, I have this amount of mo money to spend, and I'm going to buy all these products. And you guys can do that throughout the entire holiday season. So tomorrow, starting tomorrow, you guys know this mug is out, right? The Thor Valkyrie mug. Have you seen this? Here. Let's see. Let's see if I got mug cam working. Here we go. Yes, there it is. This beautiful Thor Valkyrie mug depicting Thor, Valkyrie, Odin's ravens, and his wolves. It's incredible. Designed by Thomas Dragonetti again, even with the coffee beans with the little, with the little uh, lightning bolts right there. Absolutely amazing. Black and red glaze. We made 5,000 of these. They were released early, one day early today to subscribers only. Tomorrow, they're released to everybody. And all you got to do is go on over to deathwishcoffee.com tomorrow and pick one up. You guys know about it because you're watching the show. You know about it, hopefully, because you are subscribed to our email list. You'll get an email at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time when this hits the website and is live for sale. Also, if you are in the U.S., you can subscribe to our text message list. You can text MUGS, M-U-G-S, to 484848. That's 48 three times. Text MUGS to that. You'll be signed up to the, the, the text message. And literally, when these go on sale, you'll get a text message with a link to buy it. You can buy it right off your smartphone without having to do anything. It's amazing. I love this mug. I'm going to show it to you again. Just because I'm happy that I made mug cam work. But uh, I love this mug. It is amazing. It's 14-plus ounces. Comes out tomorrow on DeathWishCoffee.com. Um, I hope you guys all get it because we, we're so excited to put one Viking on there. We definitely wanted to put Thor and Valkyrie, the greatest Viking team ever. Um, it's just amazing. I'm so, so, so excited for this. Hope you guys get this. Get two. Get one for yourself and one for somebody for a holiday gift because I think they'd love it. So this is Thursday. This is tomorrow on Thanksgiving. This will be there. Now, I just want to let you guys know, too. We are off tomorrow. <laughs> so if you have any problems, you can message the site. We do have a lot of FAQs on the site and stuff like that, but none of us are going to be in the office tomorrow. So bear with us if you have um, any problems. Customer service will be available on Black Friday, though. And speaking of Black Friday... We got some really great deals on Black Friday. Not only do you spend $75 and get, um, you know, 15% off for that, but you also, on Black Friday, will get a BOGO deal. We're rolling out the BOGO deal on Friday. Buy one, get one for free 2019 mug. Now, that is the Death Wish Coffee 2019 mug, the Valhalla Java 2019 mug. And if you want to be crazy and you want to get a Death Wish Coffee 2019 and a Valhalla Java 2019, you can. You can get buy one, get one free. So again, holiday gift giving has never been easier. You literally are getting two mugs for the price of one, and you can give one as a gift, or you can give you can keep them both for yourself. I don't care. I think that is. I think that would be amazing for you guys to do, and that comes out on Friday. But not only that. Coming out on Friday, free gift to everybody. Now, I'm going to go to the mug cam so you guys can see this up close. Coming out on Friday, free gift to everybody. This is our Christmas ornament, our 2019 Christmas ornament featuring the Yeti. This was the medallion from our 2017 mug. It is a stainless steel Christmas ornament, which I've been, I've been uh, saying I want to, like, sharpen this and make throwing stars out of it. But it's so awesome the way that this is etched in steel, and it looks amazing on your Christmas tree. Honest to gosh, it looks so, so good. 
And I'm sorry that I keep, <laughs> it's like, I can't see it. But look at that, look at that. The Yeti on your Christmas tree and every single order placed on Black Friday is going to get this as a free gift. What? What? And if you guys subscribe to coffee, which you I don't know if you knew you could do that, you can subscribe to Death Wish Coffee, Whole Beaner Ground. You can subscribe to Valhalla Java, Whole Beaner Ground. You can subscribe to Death Cups or Odin Force Cups. Or you can even subscribe to our brand new cans of cold brew. Any of those subscriptions that you set up that come to your house every couple weeks or every month or every couple months, however you want it, your next subscription, you'll get one of these too. But I mean, why wait? Because you're going to want this before Christmas, right? I would make a order on Black Friday, and you'll definitely get this before Christmas, and you'll be able to put it on your Christmas tree. Or hang it around for the holidays. I don't discriminate, you know? I, like, I, if you don't celebrate Christmas, this still is going to look awesome wherever you hang it. So that's Black Friday. Okay, we got Thanksgiving. And then we got the buy one, get one free 2019 mugs, Death Wish Coffee, or Valhalla Java, mix and match, plus free gift, Yeti ornament. We're only through Black Friday. What about Small Business Saturday? I don't even know if you guys know about this yet. This is something that you guys have been asking for for a very long time. Ever since we partnered with Ethereal Confections, we've loved what they've been able to do with the chocolate because they take our roasted coffee beans and pair chocolate with them and make amazing confections out of it. And we've done chocolate bars and for halloween i don't know if you got it but we did the coffin with the bones in it how cool was that all chocolate and coffee in there as well that was amazing well small business saturday this saturday we're coming out with dun, da, 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 a tin a tin of what how about chocolate-covered coffee beans? What? You guys have been wanting these for a while. I just opened this, and this all I can smell is this now. This is amazing. This is our Death Wish coffee. Roasted beans, okay, covered in Ethereal Confections dark chocolate. These are vegan. These are gluten-free. They're amazing. They come in a collectible tin. This beautiful collectible tin that you can do whatever you want with. You could, you could put your valuables in there. You could make a candle out of it. It is absolutely amazing. And these are coming out on Small Business Saturday. And I'm going to eat one right now. Oh, they're so good. They are so good. You want to talk about a stocking stuffer? I'm sorry. Now I'm chewing and talking to you guys. This is the worst. <laughs> so good. Literally, one of the best stocking stuffers out there. Who doesn't love to get candy in their stocking? Not only that, this is caffeinated candy. Not only that, it's the world's strongest caffeinated candy. Not only that, it's the galaxy's strongest caffeinated candy. For all you guys who might have been living under a rock, we've sent our coffee to space twice. And some of that coffee is in here. This is our coffee beans. Death Wish coffee beans covered in chocolate. Mmm. Sorry. I'm sorry I chewed in your in your mouths uh, or in your faces. I chewed in my mouth. You guys chewed in your faces. You guys are asking prices. I'm never given that, that information. <laughs> I ask for it all the time. I'm sorry. I don't know the price. I, if, I, if I knew it, I would tell you. And I do ask for it. But a lot of times we're working on trying to make the best price possible for you guys. Um, you know, and oh, and I don't know if you knew this, but if you guys sign up on our website, you get free shipping, too. I don't know if you knew that, speaking of price. So maybe you should do that as well. But chocolate-covered coffee beans. Small business Saturday. Now, Sunday, nobody gives a shit about Sunday. We're not doing anything on Sunday. If you want to buy stuff on Sunday, website will be working. It'll Everything will be, everything will be running, but we're not releasing anything on Sunday. We're just not because um, we don't care. We're, we're doing, like I said, Thanksgiving. And then we're doing buy one, get one free 2019 mugs and a free ornament on Black Friday. And then we're doing Small Business Saturday. Delicious, delicious, dark chocolate covered coffee beans. Nothing on Saturday. But 
Y'all know Cyber Monday's a thing, right? And we love Cyber Monday because we are DeathWishCoffee.com. You go on over to DeathWishCoffee.com and you're going to be able to see all this stuff that I've been talking about. It's all going to be there, including all of our merchandise, all of our amazing coffee products, right? Cyber Monday? First of all, we're going to be pushing, before I get to the really exciting, we're going to be pushing buy two, get one free pumpkin. If you like our Cauldron Age pumpkin coffee, you'll be able to buy two bags and get one for free. So you're going to be able to stock up for the year doing it like that. Or, again, a great way to give as gifts. And I'll I'll tell you guys a little secret. That's live on the site right now. So if you guys want to go over to deathwishcoffee.com right now and buy two bags of pumpkin coffee and get a third one for free, you could. But you can wait till Monday, too, because we're going to push it out to everybody as well. But Cyber Monday is our next golden ticket day. Now, for anybody who's new here, maybe you don't know what a golden ticket is. This right here, this is our brand new, this is our November mug for 2019, our Thor Valkyrie mug, right? That's released tomorrow to the masses. The way that worked, though, is two weeks prior to that, we released a golden ticket version of this mug, which was a completely different color. And that meant that any order placed on DeathWishCoffee.com on a golden ticket day had the random chance of getting one of maybe 20 of those random mugs, right? Do you guys want to see our Christmas mug? Our golden ticket Christmas mug? Introducing the golden ticket Christmas mug that will be coming out on Cyber Monday in random orders. Oh, there it is. Krampus. You guys wanted it. We finally got it done. We got a Krampus mug, and this is amazing. Now, the actual colors of this mug are going to blow your mind as well, but this is the variant. This is the golden ticket Krampus mug. So on Cyber Monday, any order placed will have a chance to get one of these super rare mugs. Around 20 we release in random orders, but that's not all. Every single order placed on Cyber Monday, every single order placed on Cyber Monday will receive a free patch. A Krampus patch. Look at that. I'm trying to get it. It's tough. (laughs) It's tough looking at the monitor and making it work. But yeah, look at that. Isn't that amazing? That right there is Krampus in all his glory Standing over a pile of skulls, this patch will be yours for free on Cyber Monday for every single order you place. And you could win a, a, a super rare Krampus Golden Ticket mug. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? So, real quick, right now, right now, every $75 you spend, you get 15% off, right? We got a holiday gift guide. You can go quick and easy on our merch page, on our coffee page, and find gifts for under $100, gifts for under $40, gifts for under $20, and literally get all of your holiday shopping done. Thursday, Thanksgiving, tomorrow, we're releasing this mug, the Thor Valkyrie mug. You guys can get that. You can get one for yourself, one for a friend. On Friday, buy one, get one free, 2019 mugs. That's Deathwish. That's Valhalla. Every single order gets that awesome Yeti stainless steel Christmas ornament. Small Business Saturday. Those delicious dark chocolate co- covered coffee beans from Ethereal Confections and Us. And, an, and a collectible tin. You guys don't want to miss out on that. That's on Saturday. Sunday, we're taking the day off. You guys can still order, but we're not releasing anything on Sunday. But on Monday, Golden Ticket Day. How exciting is that? And then we're in December. Home stretch, baby. End of a decade. We're almost we're almost at that finish line. Soon to be the roaring 20s. 
And all we got is a handful of amazing, amazing releases in the month of December before we get into 2020. And then we start all over again. And I can't wait to do it with all you guys. Look, I can't thank you enough for taking time and being with me tonight. I know that this is the night before Thanksgiving. A lot of time, you know, a lot of people go out and uh, have a good time, go party, you know, are with friends and family. But you guys decided to spend it with me, and that means a lot because it's not just me. It's Deathwish Coffee. Uh, Deathwish Coffee Company would be absolutely nothing without the likes of you people. And uh, honestly, uh, from the bottom of my heart and everybody that works at Deathwish Coffee, we're very thankful for you, and we hope that you all have a very, very happy and wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, finally, I do want to mention, stay tuned as soon as I sign off, because this mug, the Monster Mug, the double-sided first-ever Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde mug from our Halloween release, I'm going to give one away on Facebook, and I'm going to give one away on Twitch in those comments as soon as I sign off. But our YouTube winner right now, John Kinsley. Kingsley, I hope I didn't write that down wrong. Kingsley, <laughs> um, you are the winner. All you got to do is message deathwishcoffee.com at hey, H-E-Y, at deathwishcoffee.com or hit us up on Facebook, Death Wish Coffee Company on Facebook and give us your information, and we'll get it right out to you. Stay tuned on Twitch and on Facebook. Um, guys, once again, have a happy Thanksgiving. There is no Facebook Live on Friday because we won't be here, but we'll be back next week and uh, with another show, a lot more fun. Don't miss out on all those deals. Don't miss, don't miss out on all this stuff. I'll see you guys.